This training video will demonstrate deploying agents from the Viper Business Console. The purpose of this training is to demonstrate the different methods of deploying Viper agents to protect individual machines and be centrally managed from the Viper server. During this training, we'll cover the following topics. We'll mainly focus on Windows agents and cover agent policies and templates, why and how to use them, incompatible software removal, manual agent deployment, automatic agent deployment, and remote agents and agent packages. We'll also take a look at deploying agents for Mac, iOS, and Android devices. In most environments, not all machines will have the same antivirus settings. Scan schedules for servers and PCs may be different, and remote laptop users may be given more control over their settings than office-based users. Policies in Viper Business contain custom settings, and each machine belongs to one policy. To speed up the process of customizing policies, a number of templates are included in Viper that cover some common requirements. Templates are only available for Windows policies. When a new policy is created, you can base it off either an existing policy or, for Windows policies, a template. Then, customize it further if required. This screenshot of the Viper Business Console shows a number of policies and templates. The Windows templates can easily be hidden by right-clicking on Windows policies. Although it is possible to run more than one antivirus program on a single computer, the setup is quite complex and not recommended for most circumstances. So in general, only one antivirus program should be installed and running on a machine at once. More than one AV program can cause serious slowdowns in system performance as multiple AVs try to scan the same file at the same time. Viper's incompatible software removal process will scan the target PC just before the Viper agent is installed and uninstall any detected incompatible software. This component is configured at the policy level as seen here in the policy properties window. The feature can be disabled here if required and also the auto reboot option configured. Clicking show list will show a list of all the incompatible software that Viper can currently remove. This list is updated automatically from ThreatTrack, and if you have incompatible software that needs to be removed, but is not in the list, then please contact ThreatTrack support to see if it can be added. When using this feature, it's strongly recommended to test on a few machines first, to ensure the removal is successful and complete. If your existing AV software has an easy removal option, then you may prefer to remove the existing antivirus first. There are three methods for deploying the Viper agent on a Windows PC. The first is to push the agent manually from the Viper console. The second is to configure Viper to scan certain network ranges for unprotected PCs and deploy the agent automatically. And the third is to create an installation package that can be taken to the PC and installed. Each method has its own benefits. Often, the most common method for managing agents is to push them manually from the Viper console. The Viper server will scan the local domain once per hour looking for Windows machines without the Viper agent installed, and any it finds are added to the Unprotected Computers tab of the default policy. On this new install, I see three computers discovered and listed on the unprotected tab. One is the Viper server itself, another is an exchange server, and a third is a test server. The Viper server will check the targets to see if it has valid credentials for deployment. In the status column, we can see the results of this. Two machines can be installed, but the third would require additional credentials to be supplied. I've created a couple of policies for these machines and can either install the agents just in the default policy and then move them to the desired policy or drag and drop them into their desired policy which will also install the agent. Either way, I can do one at a time with a right click or select multiple machines while holding down the control key 
and then perform a task on all selected machines. In a domain environment, the credentials entered during installation will likely work on all machines. If not, then click Site Properties and Agent Installation and add in any more sets of credentials that may be required in your environment. If the credentials are valid, then there is also an Install Now option. Click this to install the agent on that machine. If Viper doesn't automatically find all your computers for you, then you can add them manually by entering their name or IP address here and clicking Install. Automatic agent deployment consists of configuring Viper to search for machines without the Viper agent installed and automatically install the agent on them. It's a three-step process to configure. First, the search criteria must be configured at the policy level. Here we see the form for setting up the criteria, such as scan IP ranges and subnets and look in specific AD groups. Be careful when adding IP ranges so they are not too broad or they will take a very long time to scan. Second, the search must be activated at the policy level. Simply check the Enabled checkbox and specify if you wish to only install two machines that reply to a ping request. This can speed up the process, but could skip machines that don't reply to a ping. And third, the daily deployment time must be set at the site level and then activated. When this is all configured, once a day at the set time, the policies will scan for new machines based on the set criteria and deploy the Viper agent. You can also trigger the auto install process at any time by clicking Agent Installation and Start Automatic Agent Installation. The first two methods both involve the agent being deployed from the Viper server. The third method involves creating an installer package that can be installed manually on a machine. This process can be used when deploying the agent to machines that the server cannot connect to, but the agent can connect to the server, such as a machine using a NAT connection. To create an installer package, click Agent Installation, then click Create MSI Installer Package. Select the policy you want the agent to be added to, and then save the installer when prompted. This can then be put on a USB drive or made available for download. The installer package contains both the policy the machine should be in, along with the name or IP address of the server, as configured in the profile. It's critical that during installation the machine is able to connect to the Viper server using the name or IP address, as it has to validate the license during installation. Installation on a Mac is always done by creating a package. Select a Mac policy, then click Install Agent. From this dialog, make a note of the server name and port. This will need to be entered during installation. Then click Save As. Save the installer, transfer it to the Mac machine, and install it. The iOS agent is installed through the Apple App Store. Once installed, it will prompt for an access code, which is how it gets linked back to your Viper console. To generate a unique access code, click on iOS Policies or select an iOS policy and click Install Agent. Enter this code when you first run Viper for iOS and the machine will then be listed in the console and manageable. The Android Agent is installed through the Google Play Store. Once installed, it will prompt for an access code, which is how it gets linked back to your Viper console. To generate a unique access code, click on Android Policies or select an Android policy and click Install Agent. Enter this code when you first run Viper for Android and the machine will then be listed in the console and be manageable. This concludes the training program for deploying Viper Business Agents. Thank you.